We've seen one type of cancer really start to rise within the head and neck, and that's oropharynx or throat cancer. We are one of the first centers that really worked on and focused on de-escalating cancer uh, therapy for patients with oropharynx cancer that allows us to really tailor treatment for patients and really try and optimize who is a good candidate for de-escalation and who isn't to be able to, number one, cure that patient of their cancer and number two, try and maximize their functional outcome. We've had a lot of instrumentation that's been developed that we've utilized and that's helped us to do transoral surgery. So that's part of the de-escalation pathway in that many of the tumors that we used to treat surgically uh, but that we used to make large incisions through the neck or incisions even through the jawbone to get things out of the way, we can now take out through the mouth through a procedure where you can go home the next day versus having to stay in the hospital for five or six days. Here at Mayo Clinic, our focus has been seeing how we can leverage all the treatment options available to us, minimally invasive surgery, focused radiation therapy, gentler chemotherapy, to create a total treatment package that maintains cure but reduces side effects. We have the most focused radiation therapy techniques, including proton therapy, daily imaging, uh, very focused arc therapy, all in very experienced hands for treating head and neck cancer. Multiple studies have now shown that for head and neck radiation specifically, having a high volume center with subspecialists looking at the radiation fields and the radiation techniques used for treatment has an impact on outcome. Not just on toxicity outcome, but on disease outcomes as well. Instead of the standard six weeks of 60 gray worth of radiation treatment, we would follow that up with a treatment course of two weeks of 30 to 36 gray of radiation treatment. Instead of the traditional chemotherapy of cisplatin, would be a gentler chemotherapy, docetaxel, given at a lower dose. And we have published on our phase two trial results, demonstrating that this regimen maintains historical control rates, but has excellent long-term toxicity rates with a grade three toxicity rate past two years of less than 3%. Significant improvement in swallowing outcomes, decrease in dry mouth, and decreased reliance on any additional route for uh, getting calories in, like a peg tube. And we were able to identify some patients that are at higher risk of uh, developing recurrence, which allows us to further strategize how we can individualize therapy for patients. We try to provide 48-hour turnaround in those appointments, and we try to get that patient in the week of the request, and we try to get them into treatment in general, having everything ready to go with all of the plan made and having them see all those providers within two weeks that a patient can come and get a biopsy and a diagnosis and a PET scan and see four different specialists and get a treatment plan in four hours. The team concept of care, the systems that are in place here, the cancer center resources that allow uh, that to happen are really what differentiate us and what make it valuable for a patient to leave their home environment and come here. <laughs>